And as we continue on with Capital Outlook, it's time for our Capital Outlook profile. And we're pleased to be visiting with Representative Mark Kinner from Sheridan County. Representative, it's good to visit with you again. Uh, greetings, Craig. It's great to see you. And I sure wish we were in person uh, in, in the Capital Extension or or somewhere, maybe in the historic uh, chambers. And boy, wouldn't that be great. But yeah, and I hope we can certainly get back to the, the real world soon. I want to talk to you about your childhood as we kind of start talking here. You weren't you weren't born in Wyoming. You, you saw the light a little bit later. You were born in Danbury, Connecticut. And I was looking online at what Danbury, Connecticut looked like. And to me, you could almost take Main Street of Sheridan, Wyoming, where you live, and impose it on Danbury, Connecticut's Main Street, and it looks almost the same to me. Is that what you remember? Yeah, it is. And of course, um, I'll share with you that, that that's sort of part of my story, quite honestly, Craig, is that, you know, I went to high school uh, in a place called uh, West Reading, Connecticut, a, a school called Joe Barlow High School. And I was, a, I was a farm kid, quite honestly. I, I worked on a dairy farm after school and milked cows and put up hay in the summer and it did all kinds of things. I did trail work for a nature conservancy project in the summers. And, and you know, I watched that farm being gobbled up by uh, land developments. And then I watched all the towns, you know, changing and so on. We were, we were quite honestly a bedroom community for New York City. Uh, and and that just wasn't me. So when I got ready for, uh, you know, considering places, and it's a long story we won't get into, but I, I did have an opportunity with my parents to spend some vacation time in the West and uh, in the mountains. And I fell in love with the mountains and I knew I wanted to go to college in the West. And so I applied to the University of Wyoming, to Montana State University and to Colorado State University. And I, and you know what, really? Go Pokes, because there you go. the first one I heard from was the University of Wyoming. And I said, that's a sign that I am supposed to go. Fast forward. So that was in 1970. And so as an 18-year-old, I'm moving to Wyoming as an 18-year-old. And, and uh, you know, and then in, in 72, another brother came. In 73, another brother came. And in 73, think of this. My parents moved from Connecticut to oh, hey. Through Casper, so and then my little brother uh, finished high school in Casper, so we I call it sort of a modern day wagon train, uh, and there my my parents knew that when I was here and fell in love with it and you know and, and wanted to continue to stay here and my brothers did as well that they were never going to see us if unless they moved to Wyoming. So here they go. You worked in Casper for a while as you started your finance career. I did. So, so yeah, uh, upon graduation from the university, I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, but I, I knew I wanted to get into the business world. And I thought, how am I going to do that? And really, really try to focus in on what might be the best, you know, uh, environment for me. Well, I heard about a program at a bank in Casper that was an officer training program and it exposes you to all the different departments of the bank. You were a teller for a while, and you know, all, then you were, you know, a loan collector, and so on. And and you know what? I applied for that, and and was accepted uh, by First Interstate Bank. Well, it was First National Bank in those days, and and of course, there's a whole long story there, which would take up too much time to really get into. But I said, well, hey, that's a great idea. I will go to work for the bank. Uh, I knew I always had a business interest and then I will probably run into a business that over time I would really like to get into. And, but you know what? I, I couldn't find anything I liked any more than being a banker and taking care of people's businesses and helping them. And I, I really, uh, once I was exposed to the business world uh, through actually the dealer uh, department, handling businesses, floor plan lines and, and financing cars for people, I just said, wow, the business world is where I want to be. And, and so uh, my first opportunity to get out of the, the officer training program and go into the commercial lending department, I, I just jumped at it. And so that was, that was kind of fun. And actually, I'll tell you, if, if you don't mind, just a quick short story yeah. there. So it, the, in those days, it was a boom. It was a boom time in Casper. 
and uh, Tibby and I wanted to, uh, t- by the way, Tibby uh, grew up around the state of Wyoming. Uh-huh. She, her parents were teachers and, and uh, when her dad retired, he was superintendent of schools in Crook County, but she went to high school in Lusk. And I, I tease um, uh, former speaker uh, Harshman that uh, Tibby went to the real NCHS, Niobrara County ah, High School. There you of course, go. I get some pushback there, as you might imagine, right? <clears throat> we kind of joke about this a little bit, but it really has, it really rhymes well with Wyman's boom and bust cycle. While you were in Casper, you bought high and you sold low, and I'm talking about your home. Yeah, exactly. In fact, at one time, we had two homes, and they were both going down in value. And so I know what people go through. And Craig, I have to share with you that that left a lasting impact on me. Um, and, and I saved it and I still have it in my desk. It's, it's kind of buried a little bit, but I, I, it would take me a while to find it. But I know I could find it. That I took a photocopy of a set of keys that people walked into my office and threw the keys on my desk and said, Mark, we're out of money. We have no, we have no way of paying for our house mm. or for this particular car. We're taking the one car that's paid off and we have to leave Wyoming. And I took a photocopy of those keys because I always wanted to remember uh, that, that impact that that had on, on me, but also on our state. And so, you know, we're experiencing some of that right now, right? With coal sure. and with everything else. And I remember that clearly, but with two houses, both going down, when Tibby and I moved to Sheridan, we had to rent for almost five years because we didn't, the, the money that we had for down payments on a house was gone. And so we've, you know, personally gone through, you know, sort of the, the tough times around Wyoming and we get it when, you know, when people are struggling. And I think that's helped you know, me think about, you know, the work that I'm doing now in the legislature and on the appropriations committee. Uh, I, I don't forget that at all. Representative, your house is not 50 years old. It's not 75 years old. It's not 100 years old. It's even older than that. <laughs> Craig, uh, yeah, we, we live close to downtown Sheridan. And our house is actually, uh, it was built in 1897. And uh, it was built by a Jewish hide merchant named Benjamin Holstein, uh, a brick house. It's a it's kind of a, a they called it a poor man's Victorian. And Tibby and I have just always been in, intrigued by older homes. And this one really appealed to us. And I, I won't bore you with the whole story of how that happened. It ha- we, we ended up with it through a friend. And but actually, uh, we're we're only the third family to own wow. this house. Wow. And, and so we're trying to take care of it. We've lived here for 25 years and our kids, our daughter and her husband have indicated someday they would like to maybe continue to take care of the house. And so we're just really proud of the house's history in Wyoming. And he did a lot of things in Sheridan and uh, it built uh, some business buildings in downtown Sheridan and was quite a businessman here in Sheridan and didn't have his name on a lot of the streets and things like many of the other you know, former founders of, uh, of Sheridan. But my dad did some research uh, once upon a time, and I think it was in around the 1900 census. It said that the, that the language spoken in our home was Yiddish. And so that's kind of fun to think about that. Sure. And the history, sure. you know, of, you know, and of course our great history of our, our country, of people coming together from, from all places and uh, speaking all different languages and coming together to build our country and then, you know, in turn, build Wyoming. Wow. It's just, (laughs) I just love it. And it's been wonderful getting to know you over the years, Representative. I I certainly appreciate the time that you have spent with with us. And I uh, look forward to continue seeing you again. So thank you so much for sitting down with us for this Capital Outlook profile. Absolutely. And to our folks out there in Wyoming, good times are ahead. We'll work through this and uh, we'll be better and stronger when we do.